Last time, action with garage conversion, but I didn't talk too much about kit. Today, I'm going back in time to when I was just starting out with my kit conversion. It's been almost exactly 13 years since I decided to build myself a kit replica. The idea has been in my head for a few years already, but for various reasons I never tackled the project. Until one day, in the summer of 2009, I finally decided to make my dream come true. I admit, Andreas from mykit.de was my inspiration. Like me, he is an IT guy and says about himself that he had no idea about cars, at least back then. So, if he can do it, then so can I. And so I looked around for a usable donor vehicle. I finally found what I was looking for in the Swiss canton of Bern, where I bought a red 1987 Pontiac Freiburg with a roughly 165,000 km mileage. At that time, there was also an already black painted 84 Trans Am for sale elsewhere. But this vehicle looked so perfect and had such a low mileage that I felt it was a real shame to tinker this into a kit. And so I stuck with the red Firebird, well anticipating that this is actually not the fully correct car. Although it's an automatic transmission car, the Firebird comes with a 5 litre engine instead of the 5.7 litre engine of the Trans Am. Apart from that, it had some rust damage, sagging upholstery, the grey interior, paintwork damage and a few other minor imperfections. There were other things that weren't really correct either. The cowl induction hood was missing and the fenders had no opening for the air extractors. Furthermore, it lacked the turbocast rims and also the ground effects weren't there either. In addition, there is a wrong rear bumper. On the plus side, it is a T-top with the Targa glass roofs. Furthermore, the D80 rear spoiler was already installed, as well as the correct side mirrors. At the beginning, I had set myself the goal of an exterior replica. It's supposed to be an interior replica at some point, but you have to start somewhere. Of course, I had informed myself very precisely in advance and compiled me a list of what parts I would need for the conversion. For an exterior replica, you don't actually need too many parts, but you have to find them first. The most famous trademark of kit is of course the front nose with the red running light, the scanner. I bought the front nose from Night Passions. The scanner, on the other hand, is an entirely different chapter. I had actually heard good things about Electric Enterprises and Brand Fulbright and ordered the scanner there. Unfortunately, like many others, I was cheated and never received the scanner. Unfortunately, I had also ordered the dashboard electronics from Brennan. But at least, after a lot of nagging and dozens of email requests, I finally received it in 2013. Though, he still owes me the scanner to this day. So I used a very cheap scanner from JC Whitney for several years as a substitute. I have also bought some new door handles and weather stripping for the doors and the T-tops. Then I also organized the rear ground effects, though I didn't get the original fenders with the openings for the air intakes. Instead, I just bought the intake parts and had someone give me the exact measurements to cut the openings at the later stage. I couldn't find the 82 rear bumper for a long time. Eventually I found one in the United States via eBay. The original turbocast fin rims also came from the US, as did the matching bowling ball hubcaps. Finally, the cowl induction hood was missing. I couldn't find one here for quite some time, so I bought a hood with a welded steel hood from another replica builder in Germany. Yes, I know, welded hood bulges are ugh, but this one wasn't just simply welded, it was riveted throughout. So far nothing has broken, and later I found this real cowl induction hood, but the other one still sits in the basement as a spare part to this day. Finally, small parts were added, including new mirror glasses for the side mirrors, 
GTA rear lights, a license plate frame and, absolutely indispensable, the night license plate. Though it wouldn't stay like that, because once you start, one thing leads to another. You suddenly need a lot of new tools and lots of small items, cables and much more. Cost is summing up very quickly. Oh, and how it sums up. The car alone costs some 6,000 Swiss francs. In addition to all the other parts that I have listed so far, I came up with another 7,000 Swiss francs in initial costs. All costs shown here include transport and customs costs. Not to forget about all the additional costs for initial repairs such as starter battery, replacement of the alternator and the new ignition. Building a replica doesn't come cheap and getting started is difficult. After all, nowadays it seems to be much easier to get the replica parts. Without wanting to advertise here, but with Giuseppe Visconti from Knight Rider World you can now buy hubcaps, rims, fenders and other parts as replica. When I started, many replica parts were already available to buy, but the only source for the aforementioned ones were original parts. I can still remember how long I had been searching for an 82 rear bumper and was annoyed that nobody offered a replica part. In the end, I finally managed to get all the parts together. And in direct comparison to what I originally paid when looking at the prices of nowadays replica parts, it's not too much of a difference. And now with the foundation laid for my kit replica, we can look at the conversion process next time. Thanks for watching and please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Which video would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.